I'm going to review another wand today. Unfortunately, I am without my actor. I'm going to introduce you to Fleur Delacour. Fleur Delacour. Oh, thank you. And that's all I'm doing. Bye. <laughs> I'm going to introduce you to the Fleur Delacour wand. Um, absolutely love the detail on this. What I want to show you here, look at this. It's got the perfect wear and tear to show that this is a wand that has been used. I love that. It's also got the grace and feminine beauty that Fleur has. And here are the beautiful leaves. This is an amazing wand. I just can't imagine somebody not being impressed with it. Now I'm going to make one tiny change because it just befits my personality to do so. I'm going to give this just a slightly warm tone. I'm going to give it a little bit more brown in with the green. And then I'm going to say this is probably the best looking wand I've ever seen. So here we go. Now I love to paint. I paint just about everything I come across. Across, yeah, there's no T in crossed. Okay, um, I'm gonna do the same thing, but you know what, this is really, these wands have been the easiest thing for me to manipulate. I just love the way that they were made. They've got so much detail, and I love the way they take the paint. I mean, an amateur could do this, which, you know, I'm not a pro, that's for sure. But I'm just going to mix equal parts blue and orange with a little bit more red. Same as I've done with the others that I like to give a warm tone to. For those who don't want to mix their paint, just get some brown umber. Oh, burnt umber, not brown umber. Sorry, I mixed my thoughts together. A little burnt umber. Any craft store will have it. Okay. Slightly poopy brown. I'm going to add a little bit more red. Ah, oh, that's prettier. Much prettier. Oh, I can't wait to see the details on this pop. Now, I really don't want to leave a lot of brown on here. I want to retain some of the green. I love when you roll the paper towel over it, how it gets that mottled look. I want to say one thing I absolutely love about this wand as well is the black that they put into the details here. You see that? Gives it a nice aged look as well as the dips. I think that is a very lovely touch. I think I know what's missing. The black that I love so much in the detailing is probably going to be needed in here. I think uh, although I'm warming up the wand, I'm missing a very important element. So I'm going to add a little bit of black to my brown. And I do mean a little. It really does not take much.
There we go. I think we're going to add just a teeny bit of shine and then be done with it. So I'll put a little bit of a shellac on it to protect the paint and to give it a little bit of a sheen. You can see I encouraged the black markings that Van Gogh's had put in there because that was a brilliant idea. Loved it. I just add a little bit more warm tones. Look at the detailing. This is an absolutely gorgeous wand. I just love all the embellishments on it. And now it is an original wand. There is no other wand exactly like it because it has been hand painted to my beautiful specifications. But with detailing that I could never have achieved. Floor, your wand is as beautiful as you are. My wand case can no longer hold all of my wands, so I've decided I'm going to make a little place to put all my wands. This bar is going to be cut every inch and a half to make room for each of the wands. I'm going to drill a hole straight down. I was just looking for a one by one in the garage and I found this old piece of wood that is actually very decorational and it's going to hang up on the wall beautifully and hold all of the wands all the way across. I think I'll be able to get 23 wands onto this piece of wood. So here I go. The next step is to drill some holes going straight down. I'm going to be using a 5 8 inch drill bit and I'm so starting smaller than I need to. If I find I want the wands to go in a little bit further, then I'll go ahead and use a half inch drill bit. Once I got all the holes drilled, then I gave it a light sanding. For the most part, I stayed with the three quarters, and then for a few holes, I just widened the top part with the half inch. I'm really liking the way this is looking, but I can see that I'm going to have to make individual drill sizes. So I'm gonna decide where I want each wand and widen some of the holes. Now most things I do, I like a rustic look too, and this is no different. I did a darker wood, and I did not use a smooth sanding so that we end up with some scar marks within the, you know, the darker spots, like that. Um, but to get inside the smaller circles, I'm just going to use a Q-tip with the stain, and that way it's complete. Here's the wand rack completed. I've left some spaces here for when I get more wands. I drilled the initial holes, but we'll widen them as needed. This can either be hung up with a picture hanger wire attached to the back, or it could be drilled directly into the wall. What I have here are some holes on the back so that I can hang nails onto the wall and then hang this onto it. So this is how it's going to look when it's hung up onto the wall. All oh, those wands. Um, on this side here we've got the majority of the good guys in order that we meet them from Harry Potter all the way to Luna Lovegood. And same thing on the bad guy side. First we meet Draco, then Narcissa, then uh, the Death Eaters, then Voldemort, then Bellatrix. Out of the ones that we have so far. Yes, out of the ones that we have so far. Okay. So that's how you make a wand holder. In the simplest fashion. <laughs>